for an extra admission charge, we'll turn on the air conditioner. Maybe not. I want to uh, thank the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary Band for their presence here today and the music that you folks bring. Dedicated and opened 10 years ago on the 70th anniversary of D-Day, it was the intent of the founder, president, and patriot, Lawrence Kadish, that it should serve as a permanent tribute to the men and women who have defended our freedoms. Over the last decade, it has welcomed literally tens of thousands of visitors, many of whom traveled considerable distance to see these armor vehicles in operation. For no book, no documentary, as cogent as they may be, can replace the experience of seeing and hearing the legendary Sherman underway or the lethal threat of the Tiger, which is a replica vehicle you pass on the way in. One would have to say that Mr. Kadish's vision has been met over the last decade, and frankly by your presence here today, that mission continues. Before we begin our program, permit me to recognize those who have contributed to its success over the years. The folks at PSEG Long Island, BDG, Beth Page Federal Credit Union, the law firm of Rosenberg, Calica, Bernie, Liebman and Ross, B2K, Bristol Assisted Living, Palamani International, Gallagher Insurance, Greenfield ShopRite, and Long Island's paper of record, Newsday. And by the way, if you haven't picked up a copy of their June 6, 1944 edition, we have them here, it's over there. It's fascinating to read, including the ads for Arnold Constable, for those who have a memory of retail history. The on-site driving force behind the Armour Museum these past 10 years has been its director, Mark Renton, and his extraordinary cadre of volunteers who bring to this facility their professional expertise and passion to honor our military heritage. Giving them the means to do it are members of our Board of Trustees who are here today. They include Ed Blumenfeld, who is um, my therapist when it comes to capital construction projects, the Honorable Dan Sirota, Brian Miller of PSG, PSEG Long Island, David Berman, Jason Halloran, Lawrence Trevigno of Bethpage Federal Credit Union, Gene Spiegelman, and our senior trustee, Michael Seprico. I'm also honored to acknowledge the diplomatic representatives from nations who were our allies during World War II, and they remain so today. Acting French Consul General Damien Laban and British Consul Representative Ben Braley head of policy and state government relations for His Majesty here in New York. Yeah, round of applause, please. You bet. I also need to acknowledge Ralph Esposito, who heads up the Nassau County Veterans Service Agency. His work on behalf of uh, veterans through the Blakeman administration cannot be overstated. And here, too, is Jim Brennan, who is the Deputy Director of Veteran Services for Suffolk County. And former Suffolk Vet Services Director Tom Ronane, a good friend of the museum. I also, uh, also want to acknowledge Matt Cohn of the Long Island Association, who leads an organization dedicated to strengthening our region's economy. I have this um, housekeeping issue to relate to you, uh, and this is making the HBO, so just so that you know, the backlot, HBO, Gilded Age, if you watch the Gilded Age, show of hands, yes, Gilded Age, excellent, okay. They're busy uh, reclaiming the set up there so that they can do a third season, so there is a silver Hyundai Sonata that's blocking the HBO gate. You are preventing the reinvention of the back lot into the 1890s. So if that's you, a silver Hyundai Sonata, we're going to have to have the Sherman tank either crush your car or move it, in keeping with our contract with the HBO people. So please, if that's your vehicle, you gotta move it. So, all right, we've concluded that portion of our program. Uh, I also wanted to make note of an additional person who's representing Governor Hochul today, and that's Colonel Sean Fitzgerald, who's commander of the 106th Rescue Wing, and they do amazing things out there. So, Colonel, thank you for being here. 